Welcome to Aylesford on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois, and daily Mass from the National Shrine of St. Therese of Lisieux. The shrine is a blessing from a very generous donation from the Margie and Robert E. Peterson Foundation. Good morning. I want to welcome everyone who's here and who's present here on the, uh, in a virtual way on the internet as we gather together to praise the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And as we gather before the Word of God this morning, let's reflect on the um, the times we make judgments about things before we really understand what's going on, and usually rash judge from our some of the times our own very personal perspective, and ask the Lord for the embrace of divine mercy. Holy God, you know all, and you are. You, and you live in all of us, and in every detail, and every person of our life, and yet sometimes we presume to play God and make judgments about things we don't understand. And we ask your forgiveness as we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us unto life everlasting. Let us pray. O Lord, grant that as we celebrate the mystery of the solemnity of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. And we ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as our one God forever and ever. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up in the Acropolis and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What, therefore, you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth. And he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, even as some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since, therefore, we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent, because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice 
through a man he has appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, We should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them. But some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of the Apocalypse, a woman named Demarius, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his host. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above heaven and earth. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his peoples. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him, alleluia. Heaven and earth are full with your glory. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. That Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own but will speak what he hears and declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what, what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine, and for this reason I have told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. It's interesting the uh, the approach that Paul takes in the gospel, in the uh, in the Acts of the Apostles. You get it. He having been through much of Asia and Asia Minor and Northern Greece, he kind of he's learning from his experience because a lot of times he aggravated people as well as inspired them and opened them up, and he got thrown out of more places. But he goes to Athens, which is the very sophisticated city of democracy and in philosophy. And he takes a whole different tact. Instead of walking in saying, I got a different way of looking at this, and here's what you need to understand. He's, he does something wonderful in the court of the Areopagus, in the court of Mars up there. Having looked around, he saw, and he says that, I, look, I went to your marketplace, to the Agra, and I saw all these statues and everything else. And he's, but I noticed something. He was very respectful of their culture, rather than putting it down. So, what, so often evangelization is putting one culture down and, and we're going to pose ours on you, you know, instead of seeing what's there. And he, he looks at me and says, I saw, I found the statue of the unknown God. You've been always searching for stuff in all the different ways. I may not agree with all of it, but in all the different ways you saw the divine all over it. But obviously you had the one to the unknown God because you know there's more. And then he talks about that and he said, I want to talk about that unknown that's somehow been known to us. And so he has this wonderful way. It's kind of a, 
It's a much more respectful approach to evangelization than a lot of us do in terms of making judgments. A lot of us say, well, guess what you're wrong about? And I'm going to tell you, we have a whole apocalyptic or a apologetic approach to things. We'll tell you why you're wrong. Remember, we, we spent a lot of our theology, some of us, years ago, studying why they were wrong, not what we had to teach. It was really interesting, you know, how we somehow learned about what we're not as opposed to it. And, and he does this wonderful thing about the seductive, ever-present God in whom we live and who move, move and have our being. That God who kind of somehow is, is permeating everything. And he respects that. And that's what resonated with them. So much so that some of them who really wanted to make fun of him at one point, because he's still talking about a dead Messiah, who said, you know, we want to pursue this more. In other words, he touched something deep inside them. The sense of truth that every human being has in our hearts. And he said, we want to pursue this more. Jesus, as he begins all these, is recorded these, these uh, last minute conversations as he's leaving, says, I have a lot more to tell you, but you cannot bear it. You know, sometimes we've all had shocking news or big news and something that astounds us, deaths or something that confounds us. And you know, sometimes you just don't absorb it. You need to just step away and let it sink in what happened that I lost my mom, my dad, my friend, the world has stopped. Sometimes we rail against it instead of letting it speak to us. In nine weeks into this pandemic, I think we're looking at that. But I think what's interesting is he's saying, I understand that. You know, I think they would have said, look, stay with us and you can continue to explain. No, I'm not. I'll, you're going to learn it, but you're going to learn it. And he said, I'm going to send the spirit of truth, the paraclete, which means a defense attorney, the defense attorney that who will always hold you to the truth. And his point basically is, that spirit of truth that is my spirit, that's what I receive from the Father, what I've been trying to share with you. If you listen to your life and process it, it'll unravel itself. I am the God in, in whom you live and move and have your being. And, let, and you'll understand that the spirit, the very breath of God is flowing through your life experience. If you listen to it, Listen to it long enough to learn its lessons. And I think that's what we have to do sometimes. I know I was saying, I can be quick and impatient and maybe make judgments about what I can't do and what, how frustrating this all is, but sometimes you just listen to the paracletus, to the spirit of truth who speaks the truth. The beautiful thing we have, and that Jesus kept saying, I'm leaving behind, don't worry, I'm not gone, I'm gone, but I'm not gone, I'm still with you, is, that we have this defense attorney, defense attorney, attorney inside us that knows the truth. And I think that part of this slow down journey and part of this restrictions we're experiencing has to teach us to go inside, to listen to the breath of the divine in everything in every one of our life, everything that's happening. Because then we'll know, because that's what the truth truly is. It's respecting our own life experience as the place of revelation. Just as, just as Paul told him that the, the Agora and full of all those gods were somehow the place of revelation. To respect the fact that God comes to us as our life and is coming, is revealing himself this day to us. And so we need to be a people much more who listen. And who listen to the voice of the defense attorney that doesn't use our poor excuses, but knows the truth from deep within, the indwelling presence of our God. Jesus promised that whenever we gather together in faith, Abba, our Father, will listen to us, and so let us pray. Let's first of all pray for peace in our world, and wherever people suffer from the violence and injustice and historic misunderstanding of others, let us pray to the Lord. Let's gather together in our hearts and pray for those people who need the healing power of the Lord Jesus mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, or relationally, especially those suffering from the COVID-19 uh, virus, for people who are attending to them, people who are risking their lives for them, for our brother Terry, who seems to be going through some real challenging moments. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society and for all people who support the life and the ministries of the Carmelites here and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Let us pray for our nation that we learn to respect and listen to each other, that we might certainly know the truth of what God intends for each of us and for all of us. Let us pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us pray for our own private and personal intentions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. And let's pray for a deepening of our faith that we may always come to truly believe and experience the God in whom we live and move and have our being. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and faithful God, thank you for always listening to us. And we ask you to continue to manifest your presence in our life by responding to the needs that we place here before you and those that lie unspoken and even unknown in the sounds of our hearts. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> and through the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the earth and vine and work of human hands, they will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And my brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Holy One, our God. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours in, in a wor in, by a worthy way of life, and we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, it is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all to praise you ever more gloriously as Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is, re is restored to us in Christ. And therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who walks with us on this journey of life. And blessed indeed is your Son who is present in our midst as we are gathered by his love. And as once for the disciples and now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit upon us to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we remember and give thanks that on the day before he was to suffer and on the night of his last supper, that Jesus took bread. He said the blessing, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And we remember and give thanks that in that same way, that before that supper was ended, that Jesus took the chalice. He gave you thanks. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all 
so that sin may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, Father most holy, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim this work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you this bread of life and this chalice of eternal blessing. <clears throat> Look with favor on this offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And by our partaking of this mystery, Father Almighty, give us life through your Spirit, and grant that we may be conformed to the image of your beloved Son. Confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and with your entire people. And grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote ourselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation, and go forward with them along the way of your Kingdom. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. For there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Therese, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For we join in the sacrifice of Jesus, because we know, we believe, and we proclaim that it is only through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let us pray together the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from all evil and from all fear, from whatever prevents us from knowing you and from loving one another. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your peace so that we can live all of our days joyfully awaiting and experiencing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and let us offer each other some sign of that peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin, darkness, and division of our world. And blessed are we who are called to this banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And let us pray. <coughs> o Lord, graciously be present to your people and lead those that you have imbued with these heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to a newness of life. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and all days of our lives. Regina Celi, Laetare, Alleluia, Quia quem meruisti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia, Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese of Lisieux. This Mass has ended. Let's go forth in peace and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. <laughs>